Thank you so much for speaking with us today, John. And I'm very interested to hear your views on how it's going in terms of trying to cut costs while providing good care. You've been looking at this issue for a very long time. You have to get the incentives right. And the reason we have exploding health care costs is because it's in our self-interest. We're not paying the full price for the care that we get. And getting the incentives right means, in part, empowering patients, giving them control over the money. And when the patients control the money, they make better decisions. And when they have the power to make their own decisions, the whole supply side begins to change. Okay. But you've written yourself also that it's actually very complicated to be a consumer in this marketplace. There's a lot of information out there and a lot of different diseases and, and types of ailments that people have to wade through and figure out themselves, and it's not easy. Uh, it's a very complicated healthcare system, but when the consumer is the patient and when they are controlling the money, all of a sudden things get a lot less complicated. So you have the minute clinic and you have posted prices, you know exactly what you're going to pay and you have uh, cosmetic surgery and LASIK surgery, you have price competition and quality competition. So markets are very friendly to consumers. They're not friendly to us when we're spending someone else's money. Okay. Are you encouraged by what you're seeing here at the conference today of a set of organizations that have been identified as providing uh, the kind of care that we all seem to want at a, at a good price, but not really being noticed by insurance companies and other organizations that might lose something for, for, for supporting these companies? Well, innovation is what we need in order to solve our problems. So we have to free and liberate the entrepreneurs. And we got all kinds of entrepreneurs here. And uh, it's, it's heartening to see them. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad that they're here. And I think that if, as we continue to stress the importance of economic incentives, empowering patients, we're going to get more entrepreneurial activity. What do you, how would you describe life today versus five years ago, now that we've seen the Affordable Care Act in action? Um, do you feel that things are improving in the health care space, or, or we're still a work in progress? Well, you have the government over here creating all kinds of very serious problems that have to be corrected, and you have entrepreneurs over here who are actually solving problems, and so this is kind of a, a tug of war. Uh, we've got to get the public policy right. We have to make major, major changes in Obamacare, and we need to do it soon. You've recently come out with a new book. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the book talks about the worst problems of Obamacare and how we're going to uh, need to correct them. And we're going to need Democrats and Republicans. It's going to have to be bipartisan. The White House is going to have to be involved. Starting with a requirement that you have to buy a health insurance plan whose cost is going to grow faster than your income. Well, that can't go on forever. So we're going to have to change that. How, what are your proposals to change that? Well, I want to get rid of the mandates, get rid of the individual mandate, get rid of the employer mandate, let the health plans be free to provide economical health insurance to buyers, don't pile it up with a bunch of requirements and mandates, uh, rely on competition in the marketplace, let real prices prevail, not artificial prices that give people perverse incentives. Mm -hmm. You've been looking at this issue for a very long time, John. You're considered one of the deeper thinkers in this area. What was it about health care that really attracted you to looking more closely at it? I got into health care quite by accident. Uh, it was a field that needed help, and I volunteered. And once I got into it, I realized it needed a lot more help than I was initially aware of. And then once I got deeply involved, uh, I, I became so important to the, to the health care process that I couldn't leave it. <laughs> Are you happy about that? <laughs> well, I am. It's a fascinating area. It's the most complex market there is, and uh, it's really interesting to try to study a market that doesn't behave like other markets. And, uh, one thing that I think a lot of people don't understand is this is not a normal market, and we can't analyze it the way we analyze a normal market. Mm -hmm. You must travel the world over, um, and you've observed how things work in other countries. Is there a place that you've believe uh, the U.S. should pay closer attention to and what they're doing in health care? Well, most countries make all the same mistakes that we've made and, and, and then some. Uh, I think Singapore is interesting because it has MetaSave accounts that put money in the hands of patients. South Africa has a full-blown system of health savings accounts and in fact that's the most popular plan in South Africa. Switzerland has uh, individual ownership uh, and portability for health insurance. So there are three countries that are doing some interesting things. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, is there anything that I haven't asked that you think is worth bringing up today, John? 
Well, I think we just all need to realize and communicate to Congress that we need bipartisanship and we need to correct the worst mistakes in Obamacare because if we don't correct those mistakes, we're going to have really serious problems. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Very